Buyer Dynamics DT1990 Pro was one of the first headphones I reviewed on YouTube. I found it to have amazing build quality and it had extreme resolution and imaged very, very well. I liked it a lot. Unfortunately, the treble just bothered me way too much. Well, I'm checking back in a year later to address not only the treble, but how the headphones hold up after a year. I think you guys will dig this one. Let's dig into the DT1990 Pro. All right, guys, here we are. It's been about a year. We're taking a look at the DT1990 Pro. So here's the box here. Inside the box, we get a really pretty darn nice carrying case that I'm actually pretty fond of. It's firm, but has a nice soft touch feel to it. Really feels very classy. I enjoy the 880 Premium one because it has a nice foam cutout, but it is larger than it needs to be. This one doesn't have the foam cutout, but it has. It does have an inlay here that is firm, almost like an eggshell, like an egg carton. Uh, so it, it's firm yet soft, so it's not going to scratch or damage your headphones. It's got a cutout for the, the cups here and then the pads here, and then a pouch for the cables at the top here. For cables, we have the standard cable. You know, these are the three pin. They are not uh, not true four pin balanced, uh, just the three. And this one is fine. It's more of a uh, rubber type coating, similar to the Tiger 300R, but a little stiffer, uh, but a good cable. No real complaints here. Does come with a quarter inch adapter as well. Also comes with the Pro cable that is coiled, quarter inch adapter three pin and here are the beautiful headphones themselves and so the whole point of me doing this was really to come back a year later and give a little bit more about this headphone talk about the build and the frequency response here are my analytical pads and they are fairly flattened you can see and they have the four hole on them I show you that those are fairly flattened, but they really have stayed in pretty good shape. Main thing with these is they're not readily available on Bayer Dynamics website. However, when you reach out to them directly, they will sell you a set of these for $44, which really isn't too bad. I believe the standard pad replacement for the 880s is $34, so you're going to pay uh, another $10 here. They did not clarify if they come with any kind of a filter on the inside like you'd get when you order new 880 pads, so that's a little curious. Obviously, the construction is great. I, I'm a big fan of the build quality of this headphone. It's very beautiful. Uh, I love the iridescent 1990 Pro here and then how you can see the mesh inlay. The You'll notice the pad wearing down a little bit is somewhat due to just the fact that they're a heavier cup, so you're getting more compression on that pad as you wear them. So these are heavier, obviously, than the 880, 990 family. And, uh, but really, the cups do pretty well. They do scratch, I think, right here you can see it. But really holding up pretty well. The headband kind of misshapen, bending a little bit over time, but it's very soft. I do enjoy it. My gripe about it, right here, it's starting to crack. That crack that comes under here is quite common. You often see it on sets that are for sale or have been used for a while. And what happens is, is they have this headband that has such wonderful plush padding, but that leather outer is shoved into here. And it's almost like the it can't handle the strain of the yoke and the padding in there and the flex over time. And eventually it starts to crack and then break. That's not a huge deal as these I believe the parts to replace that are about 10 bucks a piece for each ear cup. If you decide to just live with it until it's an issue, when you churn, the way these articulate, once it starts to crack and break here, anytime you churn or anything, you may hear that creak and move a little bit. So the more wear that that sees, the more of a very minor annoyance it is. But like anything, once you know it, it just becomes bothersome over time. So. I like the ear pads, they're very soft. Even though they're a black ear pad, they're much softer than like the 880 Black and the Tiger 300R. They're great 
ear pad they're right up there with the silver ear pads they're not not necessarily better or worse just different and the rest of the build quality just man you own these and you feel like you have pro quality headphones and they they just feel nicer than the other families so i do really appreciate that the cracking i do find rather bothersome and it's a little bit of a pain to have to special order ear pads but at least you know you can get them outside of the couple minor annoyances i do feel like this is one of the more aesthetically pleasing headphones on the market certainly that's subjective but i find them to be a beautiful set and i rather like the design and i feel like that is a good point to transition onto the mini dsp ears explain my subjective thoughts and how they match up with the frequency response as well as a trick or two that I've learned over time. So we'll get into the mini DSP ears here in a second. All right guys, one last piece I wanna talk about here before I get into the 1990 on the mini DSP ears. So this is a passive filter. This is a piece of equipment that you can get from a website called DIY Audio Heaven. And this particular one is made by a user over there, the, the owner of the website, who goes by solder dude it's a neat piece of equipment the one i have here is 3.5 to 3.5 but the neat thing about this is this is basically meant to eq your headphones without having to use digital equalization so the reason i like this approach is one if i'm using digital eq and i'm swapping headphones for iems or closed for an open or something like that i'm often switching headphones for use case if I'm using digital equalization, I have to remember to swap that EQ profile. That's not the case here, obviously. I can either attach this to the end of the headphone cable of the headphones I wanna use it with, and it'll just EQ it passively, or I can leave it plugged into an amplifier and just attach to that particular jack when I want equalization on a headphone. Now, obviously it's a one trick pony. It has one set EQ built into it and that's it. But uh, you can order these from him. I'll put the link in there. They go for about 40 bucks. I think by the time you get them shipped, he is in, I believe the UK. So it does take a little, a little bit to get here and, and such, but you can uh, customize it and add to the cost if you want by, you know, doing whatever uh, style of um, connector you want on both ends. He'll do XLR or quarter inch 3.5. You can customize them a little bit. It really changes the 1990 for me. With that, let's get on to the measurements. All right, guys, here is the 1990 Pro with the analytical pads. So nothing uh, super surprising here. Real linear, nice base and midsection, and then some uh, treble emphasis, most noteworthy peaking around 8K, which is kind of what we expect from Biodynamic anyway. Here's a comparison with the balanced pads that they come with, where you can see the sub bass is a little bit more emphasized, and then they scoop out the midsection there, which also makes the bass seem more prominent. So this is the more quote unquote fun set of pads. A lot of people do prefer this set of pads. I prefer more of an analytical sound with just a touch of bass added to it. So this one's not really for me, but hopefully that helps show you how they compare. Here is the 880 Premium 600 ohm alongside the analytical 1990 pads. And you can see that the 1990 Pro with the analytical pads adds a bit of uh, bass, basically all the way through which uh, it's not a ton of bass, but it's a very welcome addition. It's, it's quite nice. And the treble response is actually quite similar between the two, with the difference be, being between about 6.5 to 8K. You can see there that the 1990 Pro has some excessive uh, energy right in that region there. Many users find it treble fatiguing. If you go back to my review a year ago, in that original review. I love the headphone to death, but that right there killed it for me. I found them painful to wear. Whereas the 80600 ohm, some people find it fatiguing, but you see fewer complaints. If you add that inline passive filter from DIY Audio Heaven, it's quite interesting. On the website, they say that it just reduces the 8K peak. Obviously, they're doing a little bit more than that here. I was originally trying to EQ and fix the headphone based on a rather infamous Reddit user's EQ profile for this headphone. And using that profile 
the headphone lost some of its magic in trying to match that specific EQ. This inline passive filter is designed solely to remove the treble fatigue. That's it. It's meant to leave the sound of the headphone the same, just remove that one painful slice. So it does that really, really well. And I can tell you when you remove out that slice, this headphone retains all of its magic. You know, originally I said, man, if if this doesn't bother you, you're really lucky because this headphone in stock is just an amazing headphone. Unfortunately, it bothers most people. Uh, showing you the passive filter with the balance pads just for completeness. Same deal, retains all of its, the rest of the frequency response, but again, from here from about five to 8K, carving out that one bothersome slice. I think that's everything I wanted to show you on the graphs. Let's go ahead and move on. So putting it all together, what do I think of the 1990 Pro today? I think it's an awesome set of headphones. You know, when I looked at the headphone about a year ago, I loved the meticulous build quality. I found it to be a gorgeous set of headphones. Interestingly enough, moving on a year later, I think that the build is actually some of its greater weaknesses. I think that the slider mechanism is flawed by default. And while I don't think it's a deal breaker, I think it's worth noting that you may have to replace those sliders. They're not, they're not free. They're about 17 and a half bucks each, and they are prone to cracking given the headband and how it stuffs into the slider. You know, they scratch up a little bit, and I don't have a problem with that. I think that that's just the style of build, and I think most users who like the aesthetic are gonna be okay with how it ages over time. It's also interesting to me that when I first reviewed the headphone, I was scared of how hard they may or may not clamp based on their force rating. And the clamp never has bothered me, but what does bother me is how the clamp wears on the analytical pads. Keep in mind, the balanced pads have a firmer foam inside, and the internal foam of the analytical pad gives way to the weight and pressure over time. So I think that it's worth noting that you will have to replace the analytical pads if that's the um, sound signature you like. Definitely a year in, you're gonna have to replace those. And then sound-wise, uh, they're extremely resolving. They image very well. They have a great stage. I think the they make an interesting upgrade path. If you like the analytical pads, it's a natural progression, I think, to go from the 880-600 ohm to the 1990 Pro analytical pads to the HD800S. I think for the user that likes the Tiger 300R or 990, they're gonna move up to the 1990 Pro balanced at some point, and then that might be their end game, really, for that whole sound signature. You know, if you're talking priced new, you can get the 880 and 990 for roughly $200. Moving up to the 1990 Pro, you get nice accessories, a beautiful case, certainly a nicer aesthetic. But when you talk about the sound quality traits, they're better. I don't know that they're 3x better. Uh, they're certainly better, and I would consider them the natural upgrade progression. But if you're sitting there owning one at $200, and then you're going, do I spend $600 to move up to the 1990 Pro? It's not something I would lose sleep over if that's an extended budget for you. When it comes to gaming, they're monsters. I mean, they're just, I, I thought that a year ago, I think that today. And I think the other thing that's worth taking note of is careful with EQ. You know, EQ is something that I used to play around with quite a bit if I go back a year ago, and now I do less and less of it all the time because you can often EQ out the magic of a headphone and what makes that headphone special. I don't believe in trying to have them all match a certain curve and make them sound a certain way. I think that uh, some of the folks out there making passive inline filters are not trying to match the headphone sound profile to one specific curve. They're just trying to use the filter to use a, a precise scalpel and pull out what is flawed in a headphone. And I think that that's the way to do it. And that's also how you should EQ. So as you become more affluent with equalizers and you wanna play with them more, that would be my goal, not to pull up someone's sheet of, here's how you match it to the Harman target curve, add all these different peak filters or shelves in there and change the profile completely. So, but in sum, the 1990 Pro is a beautiful, 
wonderfully sounding headphone that I highly recommend. I hope you enjoyed, enjoyed the video, guys. I certainly enjoyed making it again. Thank you very much for your time and attention. I always appreciate you. Make sure to like and subscribe. Some really great stuff coming up. And as always, stay safe out there. Take care.